Why was I so afraid to start a business? And why should you not be afraid? My friends, I realized in telling the story of the accidental entrepreneur, me, and how I stumbled into a business without really any plan or foresight, just events that happened in my professional career led me to owning and running a service-based data analyst business. And I realized in looking back that I never really discussed why was I apprehensive about this? I said that, said that, you know, initially I never wanted to be a business owner and I didn't. And that's a huge part of the story. But the reasons why are important. And I think that there are a lot of people out there that probably share those reasons. I want to help you get past these misconceptions. I'm going to tell you a little bit of my backstory and my childhood and things that I saw. And then I'll give you three misconceptions I feel like you need to get past in order to start your own business. So the question is, why was I scared? Why did I have such a negative gut reaction to being an entrepreneur? A lot of it goes back to my stepfather. So this was a man who was a genetic entrepreneur. And I introduced that and made that term up, term up out of nowhere. But I introduced that in an earlier video. And that's just a person to me that for whatever reason, they're just, they have a predisposition to starting their own business. They hate authority, you know, have to be their own boss, you know, see this as their way to make a ton of money. And he was all of those things. But I thought those were the only people that started businesses, people that were just born to do it. And those of us that work for a salary for most of our lives, it's just, we just don't have that. Talked about how that was wrong. I'll talk more about that today. But my stepfather started multiple businesses when I was growing up. They all met with, I suppose, some degree of success, maybe not all of them, but they all failed eventually. And I took a look at why. Why did his businesses fail? And the baseline reason is because his approach was off. He would find little shortcuts, little hacks, things that he had or knowledge that he had. And he would say, I can make a bunch of money off of this. And so he would try and base a business off of a money-making scheme based on some market advantage that he had or some little thing, but his heart was never in it. And it turns out, looking back on that, you think that hey, I want to make a bunch of money is a great reason to start a business. It's a really terrible reason to start a business in my experience because his heart was never in any of those things that he was selling. I won't get into the details, but this was a man that loved sailing, probably still does. I don't converse with him much anymore, but loved sailing, loved working the garden, loved working with his hands, loved cars, loved working on his own cars never started a business regarding any of these things. And so when you get up one day and you're tired and you don't feel like doing it, the love of money for most of us is not a reason to push through a bad day or a setback. When you have a setback, you've got to have the love for that thing. You've got to be selling or providing something that motivates you and is part of your DNA. And he never did that. Past that, I want to get through three misconceptions that he had, and I feel a lot of business starters, entrepreneurs have, that I've learned are false. The first one is entrepreneurs need to be genetic like my stepfather. They need to have this burning desire to be their own boss, start their own business. He needed to start businesses. He had this burning need to be successful, to be a big shot, to have a bunch of money. But he never built on the things he already cared about. He started businesses to make money. And he, his ideas came from shortcuts or, or something that he had on the, the competition. And, and that just never worked. It never was enough to keep him motivated. After a few months of 
small successes, small failures, everything just fizzled out. You don't need to be a genetic entrepreneur. I've told you my story of how I started out and never wanting to start a business, but it's something that can happen organically. The second misconception is that you need some grand plan to start. I always thought that people that start businesses, they have a thing, they've made some earth shattering invention, they have some good or service, they have this grand business plan and, and they start with plans of world domination right from the get go. And that's kind of what he did. This is not the case. This is not, to me, this is not the way to build a successful business. What you need is a thing that people already value. That way you don't have to go out there and tell them that I've got this new thing you've never heard of. And oh, by the way, you really, really need to buy it now. That's to me, that's for professional hucksters. That's for people that used to be on late night TV, the, the as seen on TV junk aisle at, at Walmart. Things like that. I don't believe in that. I believe that you should have something that people already want. Knowledge of how to pass a test. Knowledge of how to get a job. An, an invention that you've made in your own home and have found value in that addresses an existing need. Take care of something that is already a shortfall for people. That, that addresses a need of something that they can't or won't do for themselves. You have a level of expertise that would take them years to get and you're willing to sell it to them on an hourly basis. That's what I do. And so it's not necessarily my stepfather's fault. This here is one of my favorite books. It was written in 2011, long after he had already had all of his businesses. The Lean Startup, it talks about an MVP, the minimum viable product. That's what I started with. I started with writing people's resumes, something that was already a shortfall, a need, something that they already wanted and were willing to pay for. And I said, I would do it. I didn't go out there by buying a thousand units of some invention and then going out to convince people how to, how to, how to buy it or how to need it. I didn't scale something massively or have this grand plan going in. I had one thing that people need and don't want to do for themselves, and they'd rather pay me to do it, MVP. So you don't need a grand plan to start. And then tailoring off of that, the third misconception is, I thought you needed a giant cash infusion, i.e. buying a thousand units of some product and then figuring out how to sell it. A giant cash infusion, a capital injection from some investor, and a high tolerance for risk to get started. I thought starting a business meant, hey, you were pulling a second mortgage on the house or you're bringing some grand plan to a bank to get a big loan. I started my business with zero dollars. I didn't invest a nickel. We started by, I started offering services. People were paying me on Venmo. And then one thing led to another and eventually we filed to become an LLC in the state of North Carolina. I started with no dollars and no bills. Initially, I used equipment that I had, like my phone right here, freemium sites like Calendly and Topmate, and I advertised on LinkedIn just using my own content. I had no bills and no overhead. Now, as I went on, I started to scale. As I would work and do more things and make more money, had some cash infusion, I realized, hey, these freemium sites aren't quite getting the job done. I can do better for my customers if I get a subscription to Canva, if I get the paid Calendly site, if I do, uh, they now have premium top mate. And so as I made money, I started to scale my services. I started to offer more things. Now I have overhead. Now I have bills. Now I need to maintain some cash flow by providing goods and services in order to cover those needs. But I started with a minimum viable product and I eventually scaled to where I was spending money to make more money. I was able to offer better services based on the expertise that I developed and based on the, the things that I could get from those premium platforms and therefore charge more and offer better things to my customers. 
So with a zero dollar cash infusion, no grand plan, and no natural tendency to gotta, gotta, gotta start my own business, I've achieved a moderate level of success and a plan to take it into the future. My friends, there is no reason to be apprehensive about starting your own business. All you need to start is a thing that people already want. That's all I've got for you today. Semper Fidelis, and I'll talk to you later.